In life, you need rules. Let's think about businesses. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to SAP Code Talk. And I'm really pleased to uh, welcome back again on Code Talk for the second time, DJ Adams. DJ, thank you for joining me. Cheers, Ian. Uh, thank you very much. And that was an awesome intro. I know we were talking about that before. And uh, yeah, no, a 10 out of 10 for that. <laughs> Excellent. OK, well, you know, this is the second time we had you on, on Code Talk. The first time we were talking about... We were talking about the workflow service on the SCP Cloud Platform. OK, so uh, as I alluded in my very, uh, <laughs> very interesting uh, intro, uh, business rules. So we have the business rules service. Can you give me an overview and our viewers an overview of that, please? Sure. Um, so the business rules service is, you know, as, as the name implies, another service on the Cloud Platform. Uh, it's currently available on Neo, but there's been a recent announcement that it's also available on the Cloud Foundry flavor of the SAP Cloud Platform. And the tool service, think of it in uh, in terms of being a sibling of the workflow service in that, first of all, it belongs in the same group. So if you're, if you're uh, looking at all the different services available, um, uh, you can see there's an integration uh, group and the workflow uh, service and the business rule service and lots of other things besides are in that integration uh, group and it fulfills a really really interesting um, niche uh, or you know it solves a very interesting problem uh, which I guess we'll come to uh, along the course of this conversation so it's a service that has uh, a UI and mm -hmm. it's a service that also has an API you know it's, uh, this 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 is becoming a like a recurring theme you know like the workflow service has got an API almost like an API an API first designed uh, service. So is the business rules service. Okay. So you we men you you mentioned you know we'll get along to it. Well, let's let's hit that subject now. So why do we need them? Why are they useful? So the reason I said it is an interesting question or an interesting uh, problem that needs to be solved is that if you think about um, where we came from in uh, SAP R three. Everybody, everybody logs on, business users, supervisors, key users, developers, all log on to the same system with their SAP GUI, and uh, they've got access to everything. You know, they've got access to the transactions, they've got access to the development uh, objects, and then the super users have access to the, the tables with which you configure your, your, your business processes, right? Mm -hmm. And so if, for example, there's some sort of business configuration that a, that a power user might want to modify, I'll, I'll give you an example in a second, then they just go to the table maintenance dialog and then you know, modify the, uh, the, those parameters and those, that, that configuration accordingly. But in the world of Fury, where we have this uh, deliberate um, split between you know, where, the, where the data and function sit on the back end, and where the UI is, you know, on the on the mobile devices or mm -hmm. on desktops and laptops, in the cloud, or predominantly sort of in the browser with the Fury, in the Fury world, they have access to apps that you know they can they can actually execute these apps to to, to you know carry out their their business uh, processes, but they don't have natural access to configuration to change. So, say for example. Um, there's, you know, in a, in a sales scenario, you might want to maintain some configuration for discounts, um, you know, according to dimension, like, you know, what customer is it, you know, what day of the week is it, how many uh, items they've ordered and so on, you know, work out some sort of percentage discount or whatever it is. That's something that a power user uh, wants and needs to modify, you know, as and when they want to, rather than have to go to a developer to ask them to make changes or rather than go to you know log on to the back end and you know change some configuration with you know a really old fashioned uh, you know approach so the, the business rules service allows developers to um, to split off a decision logic that a power user might let's let's call it might might want to own and maintain into a separate area mm -hmm. so that when uh, changes are required to configuration, like, for example, you know, pricing discounts. 
that can be done independent of the developer and independent of any changes to the app, either on the back end or on the front end. So it's it's almost like a you know a separation of concerns, really. Um, so that that's why it's useful because in in the world of, of Fury apps, um, you know, we're, we're no longer sort of logging onto this monolithic uh, system where we have access to everything, and, and quite rightly so. Okay, so you mentioned Fury there, but I'll come back to that in a second. I want to sort of jump back to to uh, something you mentioned a few minutes ago, which was API. So mm -hmm. give, give me an example and, you know, the API, um, you know, what, what's that all about? So um, like the workflow service, uh, the business rule service has an API, and uh, it's actually divided up into there's two APIs, effectively. There's, a, there's a, a design time API, let's call it, and a runtime API. Or uh, put another way, there's an authoring API and an API that you can use to actually invoke the business rule service from a you know, from a, an app perspective. So, I mean, the authoring API for this conversation is maybe less interesting. It's you know, it's a way that the yeah, app can actually programmatically um, modify or create and modify business rules themselves, rule definitions, rule sets, rule services, and the, the relationship uh, between them and so on. Um, and also, you could actually programmatically modify the data within the, the, the decision tables themselves if, if you want to do that programmatically. Um, normally, you know, a user would use a, a business rules uh, decision table editor to go and edit those rules sort of manually. Uh, and then there's the runtime API where um, what the, the, the major use case is okay, I've got a, a scenario that's in my, you know, in, in the app right now, you know, the, the, there's, there's somebody who's placed, placing an order and it's, it's this customer and it's, they've ordered this many widgets. Let me now go and figure out if there is a discount to apply. So in the business rules runtime API, a specific business rules service, pass it those parameters and get back the result. And then the result say, you know, 20% discount or whatever it is. Uh, and so that's really the, you know the, the the major use case of, of the of the business rules API to be able to actually invoke a business rules service, give it some data, and get some get some response back. Okay, so you to me are everything. Are everything. <laughs> <laughs> are everything to, uh, uh, to do with uh, UI five? And you mentioned Fiori. Uh, but what about um, is there any sort of control that you know that can yeah. be, integrate with this with, with UI five yeah. and the business rules? So, so one of one of the really interesting things is that um, the business rules service itself comes with a uh, business rules editor, and that editor, as I've briefly mentioned just before, allows you to create business rules to to create the different artifacts that that go together to uh, to, to 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 build what the business rule is. And that is everything from structures and relationships between uh, structures, these are output structures, these are rule sets. So it's the material uh, that you would edit with the business rules editor, as well as the actual data, the configuration data that goes into the decision tables, like you know, customer one, customer two, customer three, discount one, two, three, et cetera. Um, but that really is almost, well, it is too powerful um, and the wrong app to give to end users and to power users. Mm -hmm. What we want to give them is a very focused way of maintaining that they, they don't care about you know, the mechanics and the artifacts of the rule service itself. They just want to maintain the data and you know, update uh, something for this customer, this discount and so on. So rather than um, have us developers have to build custom um, rule editors to go and then call the the authoring API to, to, to update those individual fields, for example, in the decision table, there is a set of uh, you know, rather rather nice, if not a little uh, complex, um, uh, controls within a relatively new library within UI5, and that's the sap.rules.ui library. So if you know if you were a developer and you you designed your app such that it used you know, external decision tables for various uh, decisions on the business process, then you could also offer your users a way of maintaining those those uh, rule values in a really comfortable way and, you know, by, by using these controls in the UI5 library. Okay. Okay. So in closing, 
Um, where do we go to learn more about this? Obviously, you may, you gave us a few snippets of looking at uh, certain libraries for UI5, but where, where can we go? Yeah, I, th I think the, the best place to start is the uh, the landing page for business rules. So if you go to the uh, help documentation and just you know type in business rules, you'll find all there is to know about business rules, the development aspect the administration aspects are linked to the API documentation, which is in the API. Um, and you can get to that also by just going into the services area of the cloud platform cockpit, enabling the business rule service. And obviously there's a link to the documentation there as well. Um, there's some really nice uh, posts on business rules by various people uh, on the SAP community. So I would look there as well. There's a, there's a tag, a business rules tag that you can follow. Excellent. DJ, well, thank you so much for joining me again for our second Code Talk, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for having me. Cheers.